Okay. Sige. Okay, so before we in, before I introduce the like a formal definition of an information system, uh let's take a step back and see ano nga ba yung um what were the information systems that you might that you have encountered before but probably you have you just didn't experience it, okay? So for example, if you go to a convenience store uh of course they are using some type of information system which we call the point of sales and a point of sale system so the main purpose of the point of sale system is to capture the sales that is happening in that store okay so every product that you have um every payment that you conduct or perform with the store even the the store man managers can view the inventory of the of the products within the store using that point of sale system okay so uh, even time in of the employees are recorded in the point of sale systems okay so all of these uh capture information of any actions that is ongoing within the store and even before that Okay, even if we look at our traditional sari sari stores, they also have a form of information system. Okay, so even though they are they are not using a computer based, uh, they can still capture what is going on in the store. Right, if you buy let's say a lollipop when you were a kid, if you could remember, or you buy some chips, they will they can record it on a piece of paper. Uh, so that they can track their inventory and sales afterwards. Okay? And then uh, the the lady in the store or the the so whoever is uh, whoever is manning the store, uh, he or she could uh, simply check that record to view the final sales for the day or the final inventory levels. Okay, so at at both cases, information system exists. Okay. The difference simply is that on the left-hand side for that store, they are using a computer-based information system, while on the right-hand side, they are using a basically manual um, information system. Okay, But the point is, as I've mentioned, as probably if you're looking at the, at the common, uh, common theme between the two, is that they could capture the things that are ongoing within the organization, within the uh, within the store, basically, or organization, right? So an in, uh, an information system, just to put uh, some formal definition, it's a set of interrelated components that collect, manipulate, store, and disseminate data and information and provide the feedback mechanism to meet an objective. So earlier on the stores, on the store example, if the objective is to... Uh, increase sales then somehow they need to view the sales information okay and then that is collected that is captured stored in the pos or on the logbook of sorry sorry stores in case okay so this is just a simple visual on how it happens so okay so we input the data okay uh whether by typing it in you know scanning the barcode um, uh, writing it down on the piece of uh, on the logbook or on the on the piece of paper, we process them. The system processes them, okay, and then it provides an output which serves as feedback for the input and the processing part, okay. All right. So the input is the activity of gathering and capturing new data, okay. So again, if you if after you buy, uh, your items. Let's, uh, another person came in, then that is considered as new data for the information system. Okay, um, Output is to produce useful information for decision making. Okay? Like if you're looking into the sales, if you're looking into the final inventory of the store, then that is the output of uh, the information system in that store. Okay? And processing is simply converting or transforming these data or these input into useful outputs. Okay, so for
for example, if you look at a computer-based information system, okay, um, or an by bang example, uh, let's say, um, let's say ISIS, okay, so you enlist into your classes. That's the input, and the final output would be, um, uh, let's say a schedule or the final list of approved classes because it has to go through some approvals in between, for example. Okay, so that's the type of processing that can happen in information system. Okay, so other examples of information system. Okay, if you are familiar with Project NOAA, it's an information system specific to disaster and risk management. So the inputs would be uh, some let's say the some flood maps or hazard maps that were uh that were uh digitized into the platform and the output would be these visuals okay that could help organizations or lgus to uh to conduct relief operations to uh make sure that the uh yeah basically for risk disaster and risk management and mitigation okay so other inputs could be set uh, inputs from the sensors that uh, that uh, that captures these changes in the weather, and the output would be the visuals of uh, the upcoming typhoon. Okay, the processing would be all the calculations that happen, uh, start coming from that raw data from the sensors, and be able to produce the forecasts of let's say the typhoon track. Okay, so those were that's the type of example of processing that can happen in a disaster and risk management information system. Uh, we also have Faster, okay, um, which was developed by uh, one of the research labs here on DISCs. Okay, um, they were it's currently being used by DOH for the COVID nineteen management. Okay, so it's for public health and epidemiology. So they captured data from different hospitals, from the testing centers, and from there they track the 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 movement of the pandemic basically, okay, and see what see the future trends or forecasts about it. Okay, and lastly, in uh, example earlier was ISIS, okay, for our Athena Integrated System Information System. Uh, at an integrated student information system, which is basically for, uh, it's a form of an education information system. Okay, that's where we can manage um, everything that we do. Me as a faculty or you as students um, on on any of your administrative tasks as students. Okay, so if you manage your 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 lists list of classes, for me that's where I input my input your final grades and it will be outputted as um your final your grades okay on your um and I'm a tawag sa assistant um okay from my end i will see only the 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 grades of my students for you you will see the grades of, uh the final grades from your classes okay so those those are two different uh views of the grades Okay, so these three are examples of information systems in real life. Um, and all of them actually deal with information. Okay, so that's why it's called information systems. So we try to manage the information flow here, which so it's a central concept of this course. And uh, to be able to, to understand really the, the value of information system, one has to understand that information is an organ one of an organization's most valuable resources. Okay, so it's not just money, it's just it's not just people, but also information. Okay, so the quick um comic strip strip on the uh you see on the left, okay. So you see you have data, and if we color, if we look at some uh if we organize these. Data, we form information. If we come up with some patterns, we come up with knowledge. Okay. Uh, and then if we see some relationships between each data points, we can see insight and wisdom. 
and maybe if you become more too creative you can con- you can form some conspiracy theories okay so um yeah but basically the, the essence is there so you have to organize and some processing that you need to do is to capture the um some patterns some insights within the those information that you have gathered okay so data refer to raw facts okay so it's everything that goes into the system directly without any processing okay so if if scan a barcode and it outputs let's say your id number or the 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 whatever code is on the product okay that's the data okay then if you arrange them if you add maybe some dimensions or attach them into other descriptors then you form information okay so for example the barcode only has the product id okay and once the the, the once you scan it using the barcode scanner okay so the the information system captures that product id and what it does as part of organizing things is to attach some some descriptors to that product id okay so the product name the unit price the unit cost and so on so now the in the data has more information inside okay now the process of redefining relationships among data to create useful information requires knowledge okay or the 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 domain expertise okay so to be able to know that uh let's say a case a case is uh, considered asymptomatic or let's say uh, um uh, it's a it's a Ano ba? Ano ba ibang cases? So probably it's asymptomatic or it's a it's an infective case. Then it has someone has to say that someone has to say that it that new case or that new test result was actually actually belongs to an asymptomatic or to an infective. Okay, when it comes to the when it comes to epidemiology, right? So and that person would co- would have the the expertise on on that field. Basically, so it's the awareness and understanding of a set of information. Okay, usually it's by these domain experts. Okay, so if we look at epidemiology data, we will rely. We would rely on epidemiologists. Um, if we look into some uh, some store data, then we would look into some store retail operations experts. Okay, to define these knowledge. And uh, yeah, so understanding of a set of information and the ways of information can be made useful to support a specific task or decision. So in that case, from uh, the epidemiologic standpoint, okay, we want to track the movement of people from different um, states, from being susceptible to exposed to being infected, okay, and and also recovering from the from the from the disease, okay. So that's the goal of a public health expert or an epidemiologist. So that's the specific task that they want to do. Okay, so now last week, if you remember, I asked you to uh, to submit on the Mentimeter on the information systems that you have, that you think you have encountered already. Okay, so just a checkpoint at this point. Um, Aside from the information systems that were presented earlier, okay, try to look back to your response um, on that Mentimeter, right? So, and identify, okay, if you, you can't remember, you can come up with another one, you can think of another one, okay? Identify if the data that are captured, okay, information that is produced, and what knowledge does it bring to the key stakeholders of those systems, right? May, can we ask maybe one or two people in the class to share? Are there any volunteers? Hello, can you still hear me? Okay, any volunteer who would like to take a stab on this? If you can't remember what you answered last week, you can just think of another one. 
So what other information systems have you encountered before? Aside from what we mentioned, okay, um, uh, Project Noah, Faster, ISIS, okay, and also the P the store information system or the POS systems. Um, what other systems? Or who was that? Uh, me, hi sir. Uh, David. Um, for one of the um, what I think is an uh, uh management of inter what a system information system I encountered before would be like a app that I always use, which is called Tide. It's like a sleeping application which uh records when I sleep and when I mm -hmm. uh, wake up. So it okay. uses the data on when I sleep to create an average and normally presents me like a a table on how I slept during 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 the week. So I think it uses I use that in my own time to like set out like when should be the normal time I should sleep or maybe I should change my sleep schedule. That's how I use the app itself. Okay. That's uh, a very good example. Okay. So uh it's a consumer application. Okay. The data is the uh, the, the time that you uh slept. Is that correct? No? You record the time when you sleep. Uh and then do you also record the time that you wake up? Yes, sir. It, it uses that to help me okay. to help me with uh sleeping. Yeah, okay. And then after that, it gives you information on uh let's say how long have you slept on that day and then it gives you some trends, let's say for a week. Uh, those were the information that it's produced for you. And does it give you um suggestions as well on whether you need to you know adjust your sleeping schedule or what? Oh does it do uh, that or not really? Uh there's like this feature in Tide where it tries to like uh set like uh what do you call that? Alarm before I mm -hmm. uh like a set alarm like to tell me when I should sleep. But that can be optional. Mm, okay. All right, that's optional. Okay. Still, uh, the 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 tool can actually do that. Okay, that's good. That's one um, nice example of an information system, not not even on the corporate setting, but on the consumer side. Okay, so it's on the it's something that you can simply download, I guess, on Google Store, or Apple Store, or um, App Store. Okay, maybe another example that we can ask from the group. Uh, yes, um, sir. I will. All right, Kyle. Hello. Ah, um, okay, uh, we'll go with Kyle, and next would be Sia. Something similar as Kanina, but um, smartwatches. I use it for my workouts and also for my sleep schedule. Um, for the workout, it keeps record for like let's say jogging. It keeps record mm -hmm. for my speed and my time and my average. Um, like it keeps track on everything with how much I ran, how much how long I took for like a kilometer to run then it gives me um like um points like um oh you you ran an average like seven minutes per kilometer something like that mm -hmm. then for the sleeping okay. one it's yeah it's the same with the the one that David said yeah so it also captures your when you sleep and when you wake up right so Actually, when you mention smartwatch, I have I I have uh a story that I usually tell my other class, my uh business intelligence class, where uh the Fitbit, if uh if you guys know Fitbit or probably any smartwatches, right? So they can capture um heart rate, um, which actually tracks let's say an activity. If your heart rate increased, then it assumes that you are doing some uh physical activity. Okay. But at that point, his partner broke up with him. Okay. And uh and then the, the, the tracker actually saw an elevation in the heartbeat. And the tracker thought, or Fitbit, the Fitbit itself thought that he was actually doing some cardio for the entire day. <laughs> Starting from the point that uh he got the word from his partner that they're breaking up. Okay. Maybe the moral of the story is that uh heartbreaks is healthy for you. I don't know. But uh, just a funny thing that uh, that the that the health tracker actually um, 
interpreted that elevation of heartbeat heart rate as cardio for the entire day okay uh yeah thanks kyle and maybe la last sia you were raising your hand earlier would you like to share something hello sir yes po uh we have okay. this so-called alex in our math 2 course and mm -hmm. this alex provides us with a personal tutorial in our in relation to our personal knowledge so the capture data for this is when we were made to take an initial knowledge test. Then the result of that test will be processed by Alex. Then it will produce a set of questions for us to answer. Then uh, it also provides us with a pie chart where we can uh, screen or monitor our progress made in relation to our knowledge in math. So I think it is an example of information systems. Hmm. That's right. It is um, interesting. I haven't heard of this um, system, no. Um, does it? So it. So the are the questions produced afterwards uh, personalized based on your skill set? Yes, sir. Uh, the questions uh -huh. are personalized. Uh, so what happens is it monitors our progress and where we need to learn more the topics that we, we need to focus on more and the topics that we already have mastered. Interesting. Okay, and then they, they're using this for your uh, current math classes? Is that what you're saying? Yes, sir. For our math 2 course, I think it is very, it is really helpful and it is really necessary for us to have review and to be prepared for our future calculus subjects. Mm -hmm. And at least you get to know where your strengths are, where your gaps are, and then you can just fill it in uh, during the class, right? Okay, that's yes. it. Okay, thank you, Sia. That's a very good example of uh, information system. So you can see it from an education perspective. We've seen it from the health, pers uh, from, a, from a consumer health tracker. Um, Maria also shared something in, on the chat. So example of an information system is I, I use is a mood tracker called Dalio. It I record my mood on five emotion scale, which is customizable at the end of the day. And it shows my mood for the past days, months, year. It also shows statistics such as abnormal mood fluctuations, consistency insights, etc. cetera. Okay, uh, Dalio, that's the name of the app. Okay. This is also interesting. So at least you can keep your, uh, uh, you can, um, not sure if keeping your emotions in check is the right term, but at least you can see, you have um, information on what happened before, all right? And uh, so have, have you been using this to assess your, um, uh, let's say emotional endurance or emo like you do some mental exercises and then you record your mood. Is that how you use it? Okay, to keep track of my mood. All right. Okay. That's nice. Um, yeah. So that's also an example of an information system. So from from the from the the data points were the time. Okay. And of course the the rating, and the output would be the trend of that um, rating. Okay. So or the trend of those of the the ratings of the emo, of uh in this case Maria's emotions okay or the other users of Dalio okay um anyone else does do vods count as is what do you mean vod video on demand Mm, okay. Does it count as information system? Um, maybe at some level you can. Okay. Um, the reason why I said that is um, if you look at it from a very minute scale, okay, of course you uh, the it in the input would be the data, the the I mean the input would be the audio signals, the visuals, right? And you record that that process of recording is also a type of processing, okay? And then the output is a video. But in some sense, um, from information system, there has to be like a greater task, I believe. So, parang hindi siya too strategic, as I would call it, okay? 
um, it's it could be simply called as automating a process. Uh, so I mean that's also a a value of a value of information system, but not it's not just that. That's what I would like to say. So what it does specifically is just a part of the entire information systems um, capabilities, right? So do I do I um, call it as information system? I would say, at least from my perspective, I would say no. Okay. Um, okay. Two more examples from Gilbert. Okay. Calorie calculator. Okay. You input your target weight. An app recommends your maximum calorie intake. Okay. And from Danica, we have dating app. Okay. That's also a, an in, uh, you can consider that as an information system too. Um, Input their interest data about them. I think the app will arrange these interests and interprets that people will match with the same interests. Okay, so there's this type of um, processing and insight gathering from uh, from the data that was inputted. Okay, um, ATMs also count as an IS. Uh, maybe not the machine itself, but the application on the on the ATM could be. You can treat it as the information system. Okay, so we got quite a number of examples okay so thank you for those who shared their thoughts and um, yeah so basically i hope you get the idea of what information system is based on the definition definition itself but later on we will look into detail on some functionalities of information systems okay so let's proceed to the next all right so the goal of information system is to produce valuable information. And if you say valuable, you can define it differently. Okay, maybe it's valuable for you, but it's not valuable for others. So how do we actually define it? Okay, so there are different characteristics of uh, valuable information. Okay, as you can see, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Number bilang ko. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven characteristics here. So it's uh uh so you can um use these characteristics to define what valuable information is. So for example, if we look at accurate, okay, we want to men to make sure that what we input into the system is actually um a very accurate data okay because if we input some garbage let's say if i use it uh, a calorie tracking app and um i do not input the right information okay then it doesn't give me the right results okay or let's say from the alex app was it what the, was uh the name alex for the math um the the app that sia mentioned so if you didn't really respond properly into those questions or into those evaluation questions, then it will output um, wrong interpretations or wrong recommendations. So it's garbage in, garbage out. It's the concept of garbage in, garbage out. Okay, so you have to make sure that the information that goes in is accurate so that when it's processed, okay, the level of accuracy could be maintained. Okay, I said could because there could be um, some inaccuracies in the calculation, but at least there's some level of accuracy we can be assured of uh, with the results, okay? Um, complete, okay? So let's say if we look at the POS system again or point of sale systems in the store or when you go 7-Eleven, um, it should be complete. Like once they scan the barcode, it should also, it should be able to capture the unit price because without the unit price, we cannot actually compute for the total bill. Okay, so it uh, information has to be complete once you receive them from the uh, from the output end. Okay, so complete you know, all information contains all important facts. Okay, um, lastly, timely. Okay, um, I don't think you have encountered uh, where you got the receipt of the item that you that you bought in two or three weeks, right? So you get the receipt right at the moment that you pay uh, or at least after you paid right so that's the timely um level of information okay uh that you need to get 
the output of your data or you need to get this information as soon as you need it. Okay, so it's delivered when it is needed. Okay, if we get, if we have a weather app that produces the forecast for last year, well, that doesn't really make sense. Okay, so I mean, what's the use of that information now for us, let's say consumers, doesn't make sense. What we need is the forecast for the weather maybe tomorrow or in the next few hours okay so that's that is what what's valuable for us okay so yeah and the, you can look at the different characteristics here accessible okay, in terms of when you can access the data um uh, economical should the the uh you should have like the information should be should not be that expensive okay maybe in terms of resources, computing resources, financial resources, just to produce those information and so on, okay? All right, so that's on the introduction to information systems, okay, on, in terms of definition. So we'll now proceed into the role of information systems um, in organizations, okay? Any questions so far? No questions from Cody. Okay. Done, sir. All right. Thank you. Okay. Can you see my screen now? Which says role of information systems in organizations. Okay. All right. Yes, so now we'll move on. Yeah, thank you. Uh, we'll move on to the role of information systems in organizations. So again, previously we defined it as uh, an input processing and output of data, uh, which provides feedback mechanism to meet an objective, right? So we presented this uh, simplified visual on what information system really is. Okay, oops, ah, tinapos kong lecture. Okay. okay. So in organizations, okay, organizations would rely on these information systems okay, uh, for various reasons. So there are six major reasons on why organizations would uh, use information systems. So we'll go through these um, uh, decisions or at, with these reasons one by one. Okay? So first is, of course, managing operations. So if you look into your cars, uh, you have that dashboard in front of you. You use that to, you know, probably you don't use that. Okay, I don't know. Uh, but some people would use it uh, to see their driving behavior. Okay, if there's if they're pressing on the gas too much, or if their speed if they're going beyond the speed limit, so they use that to track the uh, the entire operations or uh, maybe the driving uh, activity that they're doing. Okay, on the store. Okay. It's to deliver the, the goods, okay, to, to track about the sales. Okay. At some level, it's been used for compliance. Okay. So there were some organizations that comply to ISO standards. Okay. Um, uh, also, if they want to comply to governments and regulatory agencies, like for example, if uh, organizations, if they use a financial information system, they have to register that um, to uh, the government. Okay, I forgot which agency, that, uh, but they have to register that. Okay, and probably industry-specific operations, um, the retails, re the retail information system would be different from a manufacturing information system. Okay, so those two, those two will, are would be treated as two separate information systems. Okay, so again. Managing operations is one of the um, objectives of using information system. The second is to build customer experience. Okay, so previously they call it the customer relationship management, which nowadays it would be simply um, automating the recording and processing, storing and presenting uh, of customer data. Okay, so if you become a client of a specific company, your records will be on their records, okay? And it will, marketing would use those information to create marketing campaigns, okay? So 
now they call it customer experience management because they want they have uh they have put it on an end to end scale where it's not just about storing those data but actually putting more um uh privacy concerns onto those data with the with the with uh with the GDPR or um the DPA or a data privacy act uh companies need to track the usage or the consent of uh of customer personal information okay so that managing of consent is now part of what used to be CRM okay um also e-commerce is now part of this realm of customer experience management so you manage the experiences of all your customers from end to end from the point that they visit your site or visit your store until they make a purchase and make um, some repurchases in the future okay as long as they make consent for you to use their data okay um third one is making decisions so i think we've seen this from the examples earlier you use the output of the information system to let's say to uh yeah to track your mood to to track your um your workout yeah to see if you need to uh to to manage your calorie intake so these were the decisions that you have that you are making uh by using those information systems or applications so business intelligence refers to all information needed for decision making and this is actually a separate class that i am teaching uh so in case in the future you go into the dsa track or data science and, and analytics track we might be seeing each other again but let's see uh yeah so this data data driven decision making refers to the practice of basing decisions on the analysis of data rather than purely on intuition okay so again basing on analysis of data that analysis of data is the processing that happens within information systems so that's why it's also one of the objectives of information system um collaborating on teams okay so uh i did wasn't able to update the screenshots i still have the old facebook groups and the moodle but now we have the canvas and the discord server they can be a, a form of uh uh information system somehow but the point here is that people can actually collaborate collaborate together um in information systems so they can come up with communities um, let's just say in Canvas, I input uh, some uh, submission links and the output would be uh, will be presented onto your calendars. Okay, So on your calendars, you will be reminded that you have a deadline on these dates and so on. So that's part of, uh, that's even uh, part of input and output uh, of information. Okay, now this one is probably the core reason why people would use or why organizations would use information systems it's actually to gain competitive advantage or the significant long-term benefit to a company over its competition so that means that uh they don't just use any app for no reason but they actually use it to make sure that they are at an edge against their competitors okay so for example Probably that's uh, if we look at different stores or retail stores, you will see different loyalty apps. You will see different POS systems. You will see even some customized apps on other malls or other stores, uh, which other retailers uh, don't have. Okay, so if we look at our earlier story, just by looking at the convenience store and size hair store, of course the um the system it being is being used in a convenience store will be much more efficient than the paper based information system because everything has been calculated by uh, the system already while on the paper based the same person or the the one manning the store still has to process all the data at the end of the day so it's taking so much time for them hence it's not really making them competitive against um the convenience stores maybe they can compete on the pricing right so it's cheaper on size size stores but in the end if they want to let's say add more branches 
okay they want to uh they want to become more successful in the retail space then somehow they have to use a computer based information system to handle that scape, that that growth in their sari sari store okay but and that's a competitive advantage right so later probably in the next few weeks we will be discussing these two charts in detail on how organizations actually think or, or strategize so that they can uh, align their activities towards gaining competitive advantage okay and one of those initiatives would be information systems uh, improving individual productivity okay so if you're using um, office apps okay or let's say um, uh, Dell has promoted XPS 17 as a dream content creator creation machine uh, and then you add some uh, creative cloud applications then uh, basically it helps you become more efficient into doing your tasks okay so from office when, when you type in you present you make presentations it's becoming more efficient it can even suggest some designs based on what you type into the powerpoint slides okay and of course these applications so uh, creating art has become not really easy but the but the uh has become more efficient in terms of translating that physical art into the digital art using these uh applications and maybe a, a content creation machine okay so uh that efficiency or increasing productivity is also one of the roles of information systems all right any questions so far among the six All right, no questions. So, yeah, so we are reaching towards the end of the class. Okay, it's already 10.50. Um, so the point here is simply uh, information systems, of course, again, just to recap, information systems gets information based on what is happening, based on the activities happening around it, okay, or based on the purpose. So if it's a, uh, uh, if it's a POS system that it has to capture the sales uh, and movement of products within the store, okay. If it's ISIS or uh, if it's ISIS, it has to capture um, student enlistment and enrollment. Uh, if it's uh, let's see, ways it has to capture uh, uh, technically it's a phone movement, okay. But you are in a car, so it's a, it it represents car movement. And then all of these are being processed by those applications for uh, to produce a specific output. And then those output can be used on various ways. Okay? So we've seen that it can be used for decision making. That it can also be used to, uh, to come up with more uh, marketing campaigns. Or let's say earlier, interesting example with Alex, it can create you pers it can create personalized exams, okay, to for you to gauge your uh, performance on mathematics. Okay, so those are the different systems uh, and their objectives for an organization. Okay, so if there are no questions, that's the end of the session. Okay, so far no questions from the lecture. If there are no questions on the from the lecture, are there any questions about anything else? From groupings to admin stuff, Discord link. Any questions? Will the PPT be posted on Canvas? Yes, we will be posting the session itself uh, and the PPT. All right. If there are no more questions, I will end the session now and I will see you on Wednesday. All right. Thank you. Thank you, sir. 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 Thank you, sir